Yeah, g'day, BCT PCP here. Well, I want to talk about some stability issues and accuracy, how to improve accuracy out of your air gun. I want to talk about slugs here and pellets and heavy pellets uh, versus heavy slugs. So we have here knockouts. These are uh, 25.39 grain. They're quite heavy, 5.5 uh, mil slugs. Uh, here we've got some HNNs. These are a little bit lighter. These are 21 grain. And we've also got some 21 grain, 21.14, but basically 21 grain pellets. Okay, so these are rather quite uh, heavy pellets, these copper coated ones. And by the way, that many people think these are solid copper. They're not solid copper. These are, these are copper coated lead pellets. So they're just copper coated. Okay, but they're very heavy. They're 21.4. So they're on the same um, weight basically as these H&N slugs here. So it doesn't actually state it on here other than that these being 0.22 and, and these being 0.22. It's highly doubtful they're exactly 0.22, but not only these JSBs here are saying otherwise with that. However, you have a skirt on the back of these pellets and these will capture more air. Now, what's the difference here between, but we can't get accuracy out of this, we can get accuracy out of that. Well, that's simply because of this. If we look at this here, here is the barrel. I'm just going to draw a barrel here. So here is, uh, I'll draw one first here with a, with a slug in here, roughly. Here's our, here's our slug here and we have a little bit of a back end of it like that. So obviously when this thing is traveling through the barrel like this, let's draw the barrel properly here sort of thing. When it's going through the barrel, and we'll put a wall on it. Okay, so what happens is when the air is uh, pushing here like this, when we pull the trigger and the air is released, if the slug is not fitting the barrel perfectly, we are going to get air coming down here. Not only are you gonna get air impinging on the back of the slug here, you're going to get air coming down here and air coming down there like that and that's going to uh, affect the trajectory of the slug as the slug moves down through the barrel uh, what's going to happen is that slug will not be really moving in a straight line as well as it could there'll be turbulence here and here and the slug will be wobbling and that's often seen when people attach a moderator at the end of the barrel here and it clips, the slug will clip the end of the moderator. That's because if the slug is clipping the moderator, it's due to one or two things, it's, or, or both. And that is one, the slug is not moving uh, smoothly in a, in a really perfectly straight line down through that barrel. It is going from side to side, if you like this. And when it comes through the moderator, it clips the outside of the moderator. So it's either that and or that there is internal turbulence inside of the moderator the moderator is not uh, designed in such a way that it's, you know, optimal for the trajectory of that projectile. In this case, we're talking about a slug and it will clip the end of the, um, the orifice. So now let's look at a pellet. So if we draw a pellet in here, a pellet, the, the, if a pellet fits really well, the skirt will, uh, there'll be a little bit of resistance as it goes into the barrel. There's the, in like this, let's draw out, you know, imaginary pellet there it's like this at the back of it and this skirt will tend to trap more air so you'll have this part of the pellet in contact with the barrel let's draw that like that and this part in contact here so it leads to a greater stabilization uh, for the same forces going through there so in fact if you have a pellet that fits really well so from the head of the pellet and the skirt of the pellet, and you'll see that when you go to insert it into your barrel, it should give you, for the same given force back here, accelerating gas as it comes out of here, you will get a better and smoother trajectory and hence a more accurate gun, if you like. So does it mean, does it mean that if we use a heavier pellet for a given force of uh, given acceleration, we'll call it acceleration A, using the formula force equals mass times acceleration. We'll have two masses, for example. We'll have mass 2 and mass 1, right, where mass 2 is, is heavier than mass 1, okay? Mass 2 is heavier than mass 1. Does that mean if I simply increase the mass, keeping the acceleration the same, in other words, our escaping gases, the acceleration of those uh, gases, that 
the same for both these different masses, does that mean that we're going to get a greater force for this one here as compared to this lighter one? Well, the answer to that is no, because what happens is with the higher mass, this will have a bigger inertia than the lower mass, and hence we would have to increase this here, our gas pressure, as we all know that, uh, in order to push to get this thing moving to go out of the barrel at a fast enough rate as to obtain this stability. Because let's think about this while we know this works. For example, certain gun manufacturers that use uh, the maximum tank pressure, say, for example, in the order of 200 uh, bar as their operating pressure. In other words, the, the tank pressure, if it's a 200 bar tank, and they have short barrels, uh, for example, uh, we have a um, Air Force air guns, and it's got a short barrel. I think the barrel is only 200 millimeters long. It's the same as our Reximax. And yet the pressure, though, is not operating at 200 bar. That's the tank pressure for the Reximax. But the pressure that we're forcing the pellet or slug out of there is not 200 bar, whereas on the Air Force air guns it is. And therefore, we can get that stability and we can shoot... Uh, these two slugs from that rifle with very good accuracy. I think we're using, what are we using? We've got the um, the, the HNNs and we're getting, so they're the same way you see, and we're getting excellent accuracy with these HNN slugs, shooting them in a very short barrel, but with 200 bar. Uh, all the time on the social media is about toxicity. Well, we all know lead pellet, lead is toxic. That's uh, definitely the case. It's a, a proven neurotoxin. And if you handle these things all the time and put your fingers in your mouth and eat your sandwiches around them and, you know, and, and, and bang your gun around and put lead dust everywhere, you're going to be ingesting lead. However, these pellets here are coated in copper. And these, while they're lead inside there, the copper is all over them. And you, are, you can handle these with pretty much impunity and you're not going to get poisoned by them, okay? Unless you swallow them, of course. But yeah, the copper does come off these as it drags through the barrel, of course, because it's just a thin coating of copper on there. But you will not, you will not get uh, lead dust from them just by handling them like these ones here. So yes, there is an advantage of using, if, if they work, of course, for your particular rifle or pistol, there's an advantage here of having copper on the outside. There should be less toxic. Now, some people have said that copper is in fact toxic. You know, I've read things about people banging copper nails into trees to kill them. Yeah, copper uh, it can, under certain circumstances, if the concentration is right, kill things. But however, it's far less toxic uh, than the lead, right? Copper is not known to be a, um, a neurotoxin like lead is. It's not lead per se. This will be soluble forms of lead, but yeah. Okay, so that was 25 meters away with a copper uh, coated H and N, and there's our infrared target, this plate here, there's the impact. That's a pretty big dent. This is like one millimeter thick steel plate, galvanized steel plate, but that's it there, the impact site there. Okay, so that's our operating pressure there. We just sub 250 bar, which is the maximum operating pressure. Okay, that was low that time. I was wobbling around a lot. There it is there. Wow, there's lots of lot, huge impact. Super, super power. Pretty impressed where that went. So that was there. So that was the first, oops, sorry, that was the first one, the second one, and sunshot just about in the middle. Yeah, that's pretty good, a huge dent. So that's the um, H&N copper-coated 21 grain pellets out of the Reximex RP as from the factory. See this one. Oh yeah, just about in the center. That's pretty much in the center. Wow, that's pretty good. Look at that. So that was one two three four that was me first one me second one 
Then my son, who's much younger and more accurate than me, obviously. And then that's his second shot there, which is basically in the center. Pretty good at 25 meters with the um, H&N 21.14 grain copper coated pellets, barracudas.